Hi everyone! Welcome to Volleyball DNA, where we examine the characteristics that make up some of the most intriguing personalities in the world of volleyball. I'm Denden Den Lazaro. And I'm Anton Rojas. The subject for this episode is every parent, sibling, friend, teammate, coach, and fan's dream. A generational talent with a heart of gold. She represents an entire nation with pride and is recognized by its people as one of their greatest treasures. For the first time on Volleyball DNA, we are blessed to welcome the face of Philippine volleyball, the phenom herself, Eliza Valdez. Hello. Ayan na siya. Tapay yung hair ko. Wait lang ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, may brush na siya. Gift to ni Tita Mochi. <laughs> Wait, ang ganda na ng shirt mo. Sa Get Blue yeah. din. Oo. Cute, no? Hindi ba sa signature mo yan? Oh. Oo. Ginawa nila, parang they, parang collab kasi with me. Tapos yung design, ito. Galing nga eh. Nice! Where are you, Eliza? Are you at uh, Tito Mogi's place? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I'm staying here because of Blakey Boy. Yeah. Uh, ikaw nag-aalaga, di ba? Oo. Oh, porent. Yes. For the first time then. Yeah. Oo nga eh, kasi guys, hindi talaga mahilig si Eliza sa aso. Oo, Blake Wild. Why why is that? Kasi whenever I go to a place na may dogs, lagi nila akong tinatalunan or nililick. Tapos parang ko, ah! Oh. Tapos parang, yun pala, love lang nila ako. Wow, love nila. Kaya, <laughs> <laughs> na-realize ko na okay pala yung dogs. And look what happened. You gave Blakey exposure as a virtual fan in the NBA. Do, grasp, <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> It's very actual. Like, What do I do? Do I, like, uh, in, in IG story or what? Grabe, sobrang na-shock kami ni Blake. Oh, si Blake? Pa- paano mo alam <laughs> line na zoom in sa'yo? Or hindi mo alam? Doon kasi sa view ko, dalawa, court and yung kaming mga nanonood. Ah, so nakikita mo yung nakikita ng tao sa TV? Oo. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> Sabi ko talaga, oh. So wala ka na rin time to react kasi like, oh, it's me. Sobra. Oh, like, <laughs> Sabi nga nila, it was so long daw na parang hindi man ako naka-react. Tapos parang ako, hindi ko ano na i-react ko. Ano ba gagawin pa? Oh, ano ba gagawin mo? <laughs> Pero from my perspective, it looked very natural. Parang ano ka yeah. lang? Parang nagre-relax ka Chill lang. lang. Nag-enjoy ka lang ng game. Oh, okay naman. Parang may funny thing doon. O, oh, nagkwentuhan talaga. Kasi si Blake talaga, hindi siya kumakain ng normal eh. ba diba? Kailangan ko siya subuan. So, gutom na gutom na siya. Inanonood ako virtual nga. So, kailangan ko siya i-carry talaga. So, kaya lang siya andun sa place na yon Parang, ah, kailangan ko siya buhatin. Parang ganun. Pero Kaya, sobrang cute nun. Sobrang, sobrang cute, cute nun na you were with Blake. I know. Basketball fan. Anyway, sorry guys. Dami kang daldal. Okay. <laughs> no, that's what we want, actually. Yeah. We, we want to hear stories we've never heard before, Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Kasi ang dami, mo ng, dami mo ng interview, so we want this to be, you know, different. That's why I'm so nervous. Kasi parang ano kaya itatanong ni Dan and Anton, parang kayo rin yung pinaka-like with me for the longest time. So yung mga, nako, okay, relax lang tayo. Relax lang tayo. Well, like, we all know how popular you are. And not just here in the Philippines, like wherever you go, Thailand, Doha, Taiwan, you got followings. And what do you call them? Like chapters. Yeah. Ali, Ali Finity. Chapter. Ali Finity. Yeah. 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 The, the famous Ali Finity. And then they, ha- they have chapters like in provinces here and abroad. Well, being as popular as you are, it must not be easy. You're put under the microscope all the time. So how do you cope with the spotlight always on you? Ah. Yung intro din, kala ko ano lang. Ah, uh, honestly, until now naman, nakaka-overwhelm pa rin. Then would know that kasi as a like athlete siguro, kami yung batch na parang hindi naman talaga since high school or wala namang mga spectators, parents lang namin. So every time na na hanggang ngayon nakikilala pa rin kami na ilang years na kami graduate from college. And na associated pa rin kami with Ateneo, with our teams right now. Parang nakakataba pa rin ng puso. Pero hindi ko rin alam kung, anong, kung bakit ganun. But, but, ano ba? 
uh, for me kasi hindi ko siya tinitake na parang parang it it becomes it became a responsibility for me to always ano eh perform and be good at something na parang napo-push din ako na kailangan mo talagang mag-workout every day or lagi ka pa rin consistent sa mga ginagawa mo because there are people na nai-inspire ka or may mga tao na parang kahit sa simpleng smile or kahit spike or dig mo, may napapasaya ka. So, yun talaga. It's more of kahit, syempre, may pressure from that aspect din na ang daming nakatingin sa'yo. But for me, it's really an opportunity for me to take that na as a responsibility to be, alam mo yun, influence other people and be good at something na I really love din naman. So, I mean, it's a win-win situation. I, I like the way you put it, Eliza, na you take it as a responsibility. Kumbaga, you've accepted that, you know, this is your life. You are seen by many people as somebody that they look up to and idolize. Now, obviously, I'm not at your level, so I don't have any idea. But I want to know because I'm, I'm just curious, okay? Because, like, like, I'm not at your level in terms of like the popularity but as a sportscaster like people still recognize me and i think the first time that i noticed that people knew me like in the public was when a girl followed me to the parking lot and then later on asked for a picture for you eliza i want to ask if there was a moment when you realized that wow people recognize me and this is going to be a part of my life and this is something that i'm going to have to live with oh my god uh no ba honestly i can't remember the first time na may nagpa-picture kasi every after game naman din diba when we go out from the dugout may mga tao rin naman talaga naghihintay ever since naman but one thing na hindi ko talaga makakalimutan yung batch namin pumunta sa Bacolod mm-hmm. tapos mag-hiking kami <laughs> And, Anton, parang di mo alam kung may signal ba doon. Wala talaga. As in, bundok talaga siya. Tapos, for, parang, hindi naman alam kung bakit kami nakilala nila ate, nila kuya doon, na parang, oh, sinaalaysa sila doon. Tapos parang kami, oh, oh my God, kahit dito na napapanood nila or gumagawa sila ng way na makapanood ng volleyball. And, di ko alam din kung bakit nila na-recognize yung face. Yung mga faces namin talaga, world talaga, that was probably one of the parang heartfelt na interaction ko with someone na nanonood ng volleyball. Kasi you'll never think of someone naman na manonood sa sobrang pro- Anton. As in, bundok talaga siya. Di, di, di ba din? Yeah. Di ba, di Just secluded yung area na yun. Mm-hmm. So yun, yun probably yung isa sa mga most memorable na interaction ko with a volleyball fan. Then you 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 probably never expected na you guys are going on a hiking trip and then encounter some fans who would recognize you. Yeah, not never. at all. Not <laughs> diba at then? all. Kasi we were, actually, that was, kailan ba tayo pumunta? After it was our first trip. year. First year first natin year. yun. First year in Ateneo. Wrong well talaga. Like, okay, so nagulat kaming lahat. Yan lang, yeah. parang, di ba, something na parang, uh, ang sarap maglaro ng volleyball, ang sarap mag, I mean, mag-improve, and alam mo, at the end of the day, pag pumunta ka ulit doon, makakapag-high ka ulit, di ba? So, yeah. So, and yeah. It's, it's yung thing rin kasi na, di talaga natin in-expect na ito yung papasukan natin, na <laughs> we're gonna gain following. Diba? And volleyball is going to be this popular. We just came into, you know, volleyball because we just want to play. And we love the sport, diba? So, like, everything's just a bonus na lang na, you know, we get, we get to influence people through, through doing what we love. But, like, I want to backtrack naman. Oh! Because... Okay. Nakapaka <laughs> <laughs> yung mga, ano nyo? Mga segue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody knows you You come from San Juan, Batangas. Yeah. You come from humble beginnings and then you move to the big city at such a young age to play for UST. And you, you know, you stepped out of your comfort zone to, to, you, to do that. 
what were yung challenges that you faced when you moved here? And how did you overcome them? Challenges? Oh, super... How old were you then? Nung nag-move ka dito? I was... I was 12. I was 12. See, 12 Whoa. years old. That's young. Wow. LA, LA came from Bacolod. He was 13 na nun, But like 12. <laughs> and parang one thing na... Sig- naiyak ako. <laughs> <laughs> Raw emotions lie. So, siguro... Uh, isa sa pinakamahirap, definitely, yung malayo ako sa parents ko. Kasi lagi ko silang katabi matulog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kaya honesty, di ba? Pag sabas, kami magkakapatid, buong family sa isang place lang matutulog. Tapos pagdating ko dito, nag-dorm lang ako kasi wala naman akong anyone. Wala kang cousin, walang kahit sino. Actually, meron. Pero it, it, parang malayo sa UST. Parang medyo one hour away pa pag nagtatravel ako. So, pagod ako kung nuwari uwi pa ako. So, I've decided na to stay muna sa dorm. Tapos mga kasama namin, mga college, ganun. Kasi it's not normal parang mag-dorm kasi high school, di ba? Yeah. So, yun, um, so, mga kasama namin sa dorm, mga college na judo. Judo team. I remember, if, kung si... si Kim, may interview niyo. Mga judo team yung kasama namin sa room no first year and second year namin. Tapos ayun, I think one of the struggle lang yon malayo sa parents ko, syempre pin- financially we're not stable then So pagkakasyahin mo talaga yung baon na ibibigay sa'yo for, for a week. And I, I really wanted to always go home pag Friday night kasi nga I'm excited na makakakain ako ng, I mean, lutong bahay. Na hindi ka magtitipid sa pagkain kasi may, may money ka. But, yeah. So, tapos, so, eto, may konting kwento lang ako. So, sobrang gusto ko kasi umuwi pag Friday night. Eh, may one training na parang late kami natapos. Parang, we usually end at 6. Parang 4 to 6 lang yung training. We end at mga 7 na ganyan. So, itutuloy ko pa rin yan, pabatagas. Wow. Na ano ako, na hold up? Hold up ba yun? Na hold up ako sa FX. Huh? <laughs> Tapos, ang nakakatawa, sakto lang yung pamasahe ko. Tapos, sakto lang yung pamasahe ko. Sabi ko, shock, sige ako makakauwi talaga. Alam mo, kuya, ito na lang po yung cellphone ko. Binigay, Binigay ko, mo yung phone mo? Binigay ko yung cellphone ko para makasurvive. So, nakakatawa. So, isa siguro yung sa mga funny stories na nangyari sa akin. Hindi wow. ko nga alam kung, kasi may nilagay siya sa side ko. I don't know kung probably toothpick yun. I don't know. Bin- inabot ko na lang yung cellphone ko. So, yeah. Wow. So, nakakatawa, ba So, pero matututo ka talaga. But yun, hardest siguro malayo talaga ako sa family ko kasi wala talaga mag-aasikaso sa'yo or gigising sa'yo. You're all, like, on your own talaga eh. So, but it's fun naman. Parang, pinro- gusto ko lang i-prove din sa parents ko na kaya ko din. And pag every Sundays, Pag-aalis na ako, lagi akong umiiyak. Pag alis ako sa Batangas, iiyak ako palagi like every time na alis ako. Wala lang, nalulungkot lang ako. But but fun then, I mean, worth it naman lahat, diba? Yeah. Well, thank God you weren't hurt. Yeah. But so, scary nun, alay, sa kinilabutan ako. Nakakatawa <laughs> talaga. Sorry, para naging seryoso yeah. tayo, but yeah. No, this is real life, Eliza. Yeah. This this is real life we're talking about. Pero another takeaway for me, is that you were so brave to commute all the way back to Batangas. Even yeah. Just because you miss your family. Yeah, super. Grabe. And congratulations, by the way. Uh, very, very heartwarming to see what you did for them. Yeah. In, in your vlog. Grabe. Yeah. You gave, gave them a car. Wow. <laughs> Grabe. 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 to ni nanay and ni tatay. Oo. Sobrang sila. Kasi... Uh, Mary naman sila sasakyan din, pero I want parang comfortable na rin sila. And they can travel Manila here, Manila to Batangas na comfortable. Pag nanonood ng games, na wala pa naman as of the moment, so in-enjoy muna nila yan sa Batangas. <laughs> it, it's a great story, Eliza, and it goes back to what you said earlier about responsibility. And you're not forgetting where you came from and your responsibility as a daughter, to your parents. So we applaud you for that, Eliza. But, UST. 
<laughs> we go to the next. We want to know. Okay. UST. You ended up in UST. Obviously, a, v- a very strong school when it comes yeah. to girls volleyball. What was your recruitment story? How did you end up in UST? And who is the coach that discovered you? Okay. <laughs> I recruited. I forced myself to be in UST. No. Huh? Well, honestly, what happened was she came talaga yung nire recruit. Okay. Tapos we were same batch kasi batchmate kami. Uh, we were playing sa Staka. Uh, that's uh league before palarong pambansa. So we were playing there. Actually, hindi ako naglalaro kasi hindi ako first six. So imagine a time where si Eliza hindi first six, you guys. Fetus Eliza. Hindi ba? Then, tapos, <laughs> so naglalaro si Kim. And then si Coach Kung Fu and Sir Benz, this was in Lucena. Lucena is the province of Coach Kung Fu. So pumunta sila sa Lucena to recruit. So nakita nila si Kim. So they handed Kim the calling card. Wow. So may hindi ako. Punta rin ako. <laughs> ako rin po. Wait, what's that? Tinanong nila. Tinanong nila kung sino pa yung mga grade 5 para para merong one year to two years to decide kung gusto mo bang mag-try sa UST or ano. So, sabi ko, ah, ako po grade 5 ako. So, lumapit din ako, kumuha din ako ng calling card. Ang nakakatawa, nauna pa ako kay Kim mag-try out. <laughs> <laughs> So wait, wait lang. So did you know yung papasukan mo when no. you got that calling card? I have no idea na parang UST ganyan kasi hindi naman din ako kinausap si Kim talaga yung kinausap. Pero sa calling card makikita mo na head malalaki head coach ni Servants, si sila coach kung kuan daw nagbigay sa lab. So pumunta ako naka track suit ako, guys. Naka- <laughs> <laughs> Ang init. <laughs> Red, not tra- red. Batangas is color red. Uh-oh. All red. Jacket. Jogging pants. Um, I had no idea kung ano ibig sabihin ng tryout. So, I guess, I had to play with that. Hindi, pinahiram ako ng teammates ko, nung mga seniors ko nun, ng panglaro. Tapos yung nakita ko sila, sabi ko, oh my God, sobrang galing naman nila. Parang, <laughs> sobrang galing nila. Tapos, pinag-tryout nila ako. So, Wala ako natama ang bola, wala ako napasok na service, ganyan. Pero sinabi naman, tinanggap naman nila ako, I don't know why. So, ayun. Yun yung story talaga ng recruitment ko. Eliza, do you still have that calling card? I have, parang wala eh. Parang, that, that would be worth I, so much right now. Yeah. <laughs> Di lang dapat, enough dapat na ilaminate mo siya. Kailangan dapat naka-frame. Mo siya. Saka yung tracksuit na yun. <laughs> I know. Then, oh my God. Sobrang, naglalakad ako, parang, Raksu talaga siya na I'm ashamed of na Life! Life! Thank God, God, wala na yung cup para ka magpaparade. Hindi, hindi ko talaga ko pa yung cup eh. Magpaparade <laughs> 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 ka. <laughs> Sabi ko, oh my God, dapat, ano ba suot dapat? So yun yung sinuot ko. Oh, hindi ko alam. Oh Nakikita ko sa USD. Ang color pala ng USD, I had no idea, is yellow. So para akong, ha, taga yung iba to. <laughs> <laughs> So, ayun, that was really the, the real story. Tapos, I ended up, kasi hindi rin nagbibigay ng scholarship. I mean, may minimal na scholarship binibigay sa high school. So, tinake namin yung opportunity na yun na pumayag din yung parents ko na mag-aral ako doon. So, doon talaga nag-start. Yeah, sobrang naking bagay talaga ng scholarship, no? Yeah. Sobrang naking bagay At talaga. At talaga na parang, kasi limited talaga scholarship namin sa high school. So, hindi parang sobrang financially stable, unstable na talaga yung family namin. So, may year talaga na dapat aalis na ako kasi wala na kami pambayad ng tuition. Pero nagawan din naman ng paraan ng, ng family. So, yeah. So, that's why, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for giving yeah. Eliza a lot of courage that day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Imagine kung hindi ka naglakas ng loob at Humihi ng calling card. Ano yan? Ano yan? Well, like, nung time ba na yun, did you know that USC is a powerhouse? Na-intimidate ka ba nung, nung pagdating mo doon na wow, ang gagaling nila? 
Then, honestly talaga, I had no idea sa ginagawa ko siguro ng bata ako. Gusto ko lang, ah, gusto kong umalis ng province. Gusto ko lang mag-Manila. Siguro yun lang inisip ko. I really had no idea na magaling yung seniors nila. Tapos, alam mo, weird lang na hindi kasi din ako masyadong... Kasi training nila is after namin, di ba? Mm. Sa UST. Pero hindi ako masyadong parang involved or hindi rin ako nanonood after training namin, nauuwi na ako kasi matutulog na ako. Ganun lang talaga yung ginagawa ko. So, hindi rin ako na-expose na ganun na pa- I really didn't know na ganun kasikat yung volleyball, ng, na USD volleyball. So, I was just really parang listening to my coaches na parang pag sinabi nila, o, tamakbo ka ng ganito, tatakbo ko. After training, umuwi ka, ah, okay, uuwi ako. As in, ganun lang yung ginagawa ko. Tapos parang, Little did I know na parang nag improve din pala ako na nasa volleyball. Pero kasi I never thought of na parang gagaling din naman or gagaling din talaga ako sa volleyball. So parang I took it one one day at a time talaga. And then, nung magka-college na ako, na-realize ko na sobrang galing pala ng USD. Then ko pala, <laughs> siguro pa na mamulat yung mga mata ko na parang, ah, may senior volleyball pala na pwede kang laruan. So, <laughs> And guys, I had no idea. So, sorry po. Pero, sila ati Ging, lagi ko na yung nakikita. Sila ati Ging, sila ati Tabakero, ati Aisa. Tapos parang, oo, oh, ang galing nila. Pero parang, ah, hindi ko alam kung maglalaro ako. Parang, ganun yung lagi nasa isip ko. So, Aliza, I just want to clarify. Yung pinakaunang UAP season mo was UAP season 69. Is that right? 20, ano ba? 20... 2000, ah, 2006 ata ako eh. 2006. Kasi nag repeat ka, di ba? Kasi three. Yeah. three. Yeah. Be- was there a year before that na hindi kayo nag-champion? So first year ko, hindi kami nag-champion. Ah, so that that was season 69. Yeah, 69. Yeah, season 69. So champion kayo, season 70, season 71, season 72. I missed 73. Since yeah. I had my residency at uh, 74. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. want to ask, aside from Kim Pahardo, para malaman ng tao kung gano'ng kalakas talaga itong UST <laughs> girls team na to, sino pa yung mga teammates mo on that team, Eliza, aside from you and Kim Pahardo? Uh, was Din Din there? Din Din? Oh, man. Din Din was my teammate when we were in high school. Maruha Banatikla, Ariel Patnongon. Uh, uh, Mia Herotsuji, Herot naging teammate ko pa dyan si Ate Rhea de Makulangan. Oh, man. Uh, sino pa ba nasa college? Si Jaja, magpa-first year siya. Ay, graduating ata ako, tapos siya yung pagpasok sa UST. So, madami, madami talaga. Wait, baka yeah. I missed some, someone. Uh... Yung mga from high school naman na nag-college, si na Kim, Ate Kim Lazaro, si na Ate Michelle. Madami-madami na produce din yung UST High School na nag, ano, laro talaga ng college and senior volleyball. Pero ikaw, parang going through the motions ka lang eh. Parang at, the end, lang, uh, at, 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 the, at the end of your high school career mo lang na-realize, ay, ang lakas pala ng UST. Parang, ang parang, ang parang, ang parang, ang Parang, never did I imagine kasi na yung goal ko is to play for college. Parang ganon. Hmm. Parang kasi, di ko rin naman alam na. Kasi, Anton, and then, di ko talaga napapapasok yung serve ko or nakakapalo ng ganon na katulad ng mga high school nakabatch ko sa USC. Lalo na kay Kim. You know this then? Super yes. galing talaga ni, ni Kim. Galing ni Kim. Pwede siya kahit ano. Maglaro niya ila kahit lahat ng position. So anyway, so hindi ko rin iniisip na parang Ah, uh, magiging ganyan ako, magiging siya ako. Kasi parang hindi naman, hindi naman ako pwede magiging ganun. Kasi nga hindi, sa sarili ko, alam ko naman na hindi talaga ako marunong pa mag-volleyball. So, nung mga na, na-realize ko na siguro na parang, ah, paano kaya sa college? Kasi kailangan ko mag-college. And syempre, ayaw mo namang i-burden ulit yung parents mo na magbabayad sila na magbabayad. So, mm-hmm. then I realized na I think, baka kailangan kong mag, mag-seryoso. Hindi na mag-seryoso, but to actually think na 
um, mag, maglaro din ako college. Kasi lahat ng kapatid ko, naglaro naman ng high school din. Mm. But nung college sila, they focus on their studies. So baka kasi I thought ganun din yung mangyayari sa akin. Pero yun, nabigyan ako ng opportunities. So grab it. Grab it. Well, line, nabanggit mo nga yung line-up nyo nung, nung high school and... Di naman makakaila na ang tatangkad nyo. O di lang kayo matangkad, magagaling pa kayo. Eh, mas matangkad ka sa akin, so matangkad ka. <laughs> Pero ano yung, yung preparation nyo and yung training na ginagawa nyo para ma-achieve nyo yung level na yun? Kasi 3P sa UAAP, madali yun. Uh-oh. And you guys are like all good. Like you're, you, you guys are skilled. And by the way, kasi yung thing dito is, Nung third year tayo, di ba nag-RP youth tayo? Uh-huh. And kasi yung coach nung time na yun, si Sir Vince. Yes. So, dun kami sa USC nagti-training sometimes. Yeah. First time ko mag-weights nun. <laughs> and ang bigat ng weights nila. <laughs> and I was shocked. <laughs> to my very core. Ang lala. <laughs> Tapos, they had like runs around yung, yung USD like field. It's not in the field, it's outside the field. So, how ang laki nun. And akala ko mahirap na yung training sa CSA. Hindi. Mahirap training nila. So, like, can you give us, like, a description or, like, what kind of training did you go through nung high school? Well, um, I really enjoyed our training nung high school kasi nagulat din ako din. Kasi nung, kala ko nahihirapan ako nung nasa province ako. Kasi parang tumatakbo kami, ganyan. Tinatakbo, yan, to add to that lang, tinatakbo naman yung buong USD. Anton. Wow. Like, wow. Weight, as ilang rounds. Tapos pag nag weights kami, remember then that weights was, may box pa tayo na tatalunin. Tapos may, may bar ka dito. Tapos tatalunin mo siya. Oh, yeah, and it was Kaya heavy. Kaya yun. Tapos Alala ko yun. Tapos di ko siya magawa. Kasi sobrang like lant ako. <laughs> Tapos kunwari, may training din na parang may bit-bit lang kaming weights pag tumatakbo or may weights sa legs na. Wow. And ano ba yung mga training? Alam mo, very technical din talaga sa scientific yung training ni Coach ni Sir Vince at ni Coach Kung Fu. Parang gusto nila your condition uh, physically and siyempre mentally. So, madami rin kami talagang pinagdaanan ng weights. Conditioning training and skills. Guys, skills is... Mm. Wow, yun lang sa ko, mm. <laughs> Parang may times talaga na makakalas na yung buong katawan ko, ha? Ka-spike. <laughs> no, pero yun. But yeah, yun yung ginagawa namin. Ano pa bang... And one thing I really appreciate siguro sa training namin, aside from aqua training, nag-aqua training na kami nung high school. What? Uh, si legit. Kompleto, legit. kompleto ah, kompleto. Uh, uh, meron kami, magugulat ka dito, Anton. Meron uh. kami, gymnastics. Nag-jet pass yeah, kami. Kaya sobrang flexible ni Eliza. Oo. By the way. Wow. Nag-jet pass kami. Parang, di ba may rolling, mga ganyan. Doon namin natututunan yun. Kung paano mag-land ng maayos. Mayroon pa kami babato na bola. Iikot kami, sasaluhin namin sila. Mga ganyan yung mga training namin. Fun. I really enjoyed training when I was in high school. Parang, it's so different na parang I really wanted to learn everything. Or parang, parang sponge lang na ina-absorb ko lahat ng sinasabi talaga nila. Well, sana naman po na-absorb ko. But yeah, I was really, I was really, it was really fun. Lalo na kasama mo si Lakim. <laughs> eh, wala kaming ka-idea-idea na ganun yung training doon. Pero, pero saya. So now we know, now we know and have an idea of what it's like, what it was like during your time. And that's why you guys became three-time UAP champions. But, Eliza, when you went to college, you went on a different path. You closed the chapter in your volleyball career and started a new one. Ano ba ang kwento? At napunta ka sa Katipunan at naging Ateneo Lady Eagle. What is the story? Nag-usap kami nila din. Hindi. Sabi niya kina Ella, no? Honestly, hirap ng kwento. Nung last year ko, ito, last year ko sa USD, then alam mo yung pag may pupunta tayo mga Iloilo, Tacloban, to represent NCR for Shakey's, Shakey's Girls. Yeah, pag, when you're like the champ, parang Champions yeah. League. Champions, Champions League. League. Yeah, yeah. So, meron kami isa, I'm not sure if 
sa takloban, so sabi ko, okay, hihingi ako ng sign. Wow, hihingi ako ng sign. Pag nanalo kami, ibig sabihin, nabigyan ko, eh, parang nabigay ko yung parang service ko sa yeah. USD. Parang I serve them naman ng okay din. Pag natalo kami, baka yun yung meaning na parang I have to stay. Mm, wow. May pagganan pa ako sa sign. Tapos, I get it though. <laughs> ang nangyari, I injured, injured si Kim. <laughs> Kasi nadula siya somewhere. Basta nadula siya. Anyway, so natalo kami. Sila Bea Tan yung nanalo. Sila Bea. Oo, oh, sila Bea Tan talaga. All the time. Lagi sila kalaban natin, di ba? Sila Bea. Hello, Bea and Giselle. So, talo kami. So, sabi ko sa parents ko, okay, I've decided. Ang tagal na noon kasi summer na yun eh. Dapat alam ko na kung saan ang mag-aaral. Ang tagal. Sabi ko sa parents ko, I've decided na to stay to sa US. Tapos, nag-usap-usap ulit kami. Tapos, weigh everything, weigh lahat ng options. And, and the doubt na yung decision talaga. Well, in the first place, ako talaga gusto ko din, I mean, the, the opportunity to study an Ateneo, siyempre, dream school ko rin yun, di ba? So, we need lahat ng opportunities. And as a family, we've decided na mag, mag ano, i-continue ko yung journey ko sa, sa Ateneo. So, yun, yun yung naging story. Sabi ko, kung hihihi pa ako ng sign, hindi naman pa ako ng dojo. Pero yan, yun yung naging story talaga. Wow. So, And did you know na Kim was gonna go to La Salle? <laughs> Ito ang story. Ito ang story. <laughs> Good question. Ito ang story. So, ganito ang nangyari. So, mag- may entrance exam kami parehas at tinayo ang La Salle. Parehas kaming meron. Tapos so sabi ko kay Kim, Kim, hindi ko alam kasi kung ano yung una, na unang exam eh, if it's Ateneo or you, uh, Lasal. Sabi ko, Kim, hindi na ako mag-exam sa Lasal. Sabi ko, exam na lang ako sa Ateneo. Ay, yun din yung binarik niya sa akin. Sabi ko, hindi na ako mag-exam sa Ateneo, sa Lasal na lang ako mag-exam. <laughs> so, we know. <laughs> sabi ko, ah, doon pa lang, sabi ko, ah, alam ko na maglalasal siya. Uh, Siyempre, alam niya na rin na mag-Ateneo ako. So, okay wow. din naman. Can you imagine though, like, yung, yung team nyo from high school, magkakasama pa rin kayo ng college. Like, dream team yun. Grabe. For sure. Or mag- at least magkasama kayo ni Kim in one team. Like, wow. Ang si lakas ng team na yun. Spiker talaga. Galing talaga ni Kim. Hindi, ako talaga, uh, a new environment naman will help you also and parang change and improve yourself and hmm. your your you as an athlete and as a volleyball player. So ikaw lang din yung magde-decide kung kung ano ba yun, anong change yung para sa iyo. So sa lahat ng mga nag-iisip diyan, 'di ba? Parang kung ano yung magpapasaya sa inyo, yun talaga kung saan niyo kayo saya, saya sa tingin niyo gagaling pa kayo as an athlete or may matututunan kayo, then go for it. Wala namang wala namang syempre kaya yun eh, hindi naman natin mapipigilan din yung mga ganong bagay. De, Eliza, ano ah, um, I like how you always go back to one of your values, which is that feeling of responsibility. You have a responsibility to your family, and then when you were deciding whether you were going to stay with USD, you were thinking about your responsibility to the school that nurtured you. So, from that point, up to before you went to college, you knew thought process more. You were always going back to that value of responsibility. But I think you should also go for what's in your heart. And I think that's what you did when you made the choice to go to Ateneo in college. But my question here is like, how ready were you to take your game to the next level? Because, diba, like, yung mindset mo, parang hindi mo alam na ganun pa alakalakas yung UST, pero three-time champions kayo. Like, <laughs> when did you realize na, okay, maybe kailangan ko doblehin yung pagseseryoso ko sa paglalaro ng volleyball? And then, you would do that in Ateneo na. Uh, ano ba? You know what, uh, Anton? Parang volleyball kasi for me is really something na may outlet eh. Hindi ko talaga siya tinitreat as something na parang, I have to be good at this. I have to be like this. Parang it's more of, I am, I'm enjoying it. I'm, every day, I, 
parang never in my life siguro naisip ko na parang napapagod ako sa volleyball. Parang it, it's something na I don't know bakit ako weird mag-isip na ganun. But never talaga ako napagod na parang parang ipagpapalit ko pa then alam natin to ipagpapalit natin yung parang lalabas kami sa or manonood kami or makikipag-date kami mag-volleyball kami nung mga college nung mga college ko. <laughs> Pero di ba parang never ko talaga ding kaya siguro parang it I took I took my time to to improve and be good at that then hindi ko talaga minadala hindi ko pin pressure yung self ko and I have people around me na tumutulong din talaga sa akin na like sila din my teammates so parang ang naisip ko lang when I was in Ateneo kailangan kong pumasa kasi <laughs> 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 ako 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 kasi yun lang yung totoo, totoo yun <laughs> then oh my god ganyan lang kami totoo <laughs> yun kulang pa yung grade ko dito. Kailangan ko pa mag ganito. Grabe, lagi kami nagko-compute ng grade, guys. Like, one na time. Para lang Kasi mga... hindi enough na papasake. You have to maintain, yeah. like, a GPA. Yeah. So, to kailangan... To play the you up. Lagi kami nagko-compute niyan. Pero, honestly, I really appreciate and one thing talaga na... Iba kasi yung tiwala sa akin din nila Coach Roger noon eh. So, I think mas mas nagtiwala ako sa sarili ko to be to be myself lang when I was in Ateneo. Kasi nga, wala. Wala naman silang pressure na binigay. But I guess, like, yung turn around na nangyari na parang, I was really, I, I, I'm really thankful na Coach Roger very persistent talaga. Sobra siya sa pag-recruit din sa akin to Ateneo. And nagkaroon din ng change na nangyari in the middle of our college career, dumating si Coach Tai. Plus, first time ko rin kasi nagka-coach ng parang foreigner. Tapos parang na-realize ko, iba talaga yung atake nila. Wala talaga siyang, titingnan ka nila as, as na parang, ah, normal player, normal player. So parang dun, yung feeling ko talaga nun, parang shocks, kailangan ko talagang patunayan na marunong kami mag-volleyball kasi yung tingin sa amin ni Coach Tai talaga, parang below average pa. So siguro one thing na nakapagpapush sa aming lahat, not just me, yung transition na nangyari na yun na parang may different coach, international coach, foreigner na coach, na parang uh, you have to step it up as a player, as an individual, and as a team. So, yun siguro yung naging journey namin sa Ateneo. Like, after your three-peat in high school, sunod-sunod kang nag-UAAP, uh-huh. but then when you got to college, since you moved from USC to Ateneo, you had to serve your residency. So, yeah. one year kang nabakante sa UAAP. Ano naman yung pinagdaanan mo nung year na yon in preparation for the following year na makakalaro ka na? At first talaga, well, sila Father Disagon, the USD community naman, super, ano ba, super bait din nila na parang, ano mo yan, hindi nila ako nabigyan ng, siguro, <laughs> hindi nila ako inalaw or hindi nila na-sign yung residency ko, but sobrang supportive din naman talaga nila and I would like to thank all of them talaga. But I guess it was a blessing in this guys then that residency kasi the culture I was really culture shock culture shock talaga na parang from USD to Ateneo. So that year I used it as a parang transition year for me na parang adapting talaga ako sa culture. So it helped me naman. So kaya gusto ko rin yung nangyari. I mean in anyway in, in, in the parang blessing in this guys talaga siya na ah, baka nga dapat may residency ako kasi iba talaga yung pag-transition to high school and college. And then, uh, yung residency, at first din talaga nagulat ako parang unfair naman, sayang, sana nilaro ko na din yung residency ko. Kung, hindi ko nila, kung nilaro ko na yon sabay-sabay tayong graduate ng champion. I mean, uh-huh. diba? Yeah, totoo. But, <laughs> so God has plans, different plans for all of us. So I guess, You take it naman na parang always a blessing. And syempre, may mga uh, pagkakataon talaga na may mararamdaman tayong ano, uh, pag, pagkatalo para ma, mag, ma-humble din tayo. So I guess it's all planned well naman by God, please. Oh, please, like, please. So yeah, I think the, that residency, it served me well. Okay. <laughs> But how did Denden help you adjust? 
to the oh. Ateneo culture because she was already <laughs> there. Paano kanya tinulungan, Eliza? Magba-batchmates kami nila din and roommates, roommates for five long years. Wow. Okay. Five, five years. years. Si Dan kasi, <laughs> kami yung room na sobrang nagtitipid palagi. Like kami <laughs> room na yun. Sa kung merong room ang mga athletes, amin yung room na yun. So every weekend, pag umuwi kami, lagi na kami may baon pa. Pag Sunday, pabalik ng dorm, may baon na kami mga pagkain namin. So, si Dan, laging spread ata, either spread, or basta may food kami, kanya-kanya kaming food. So, lagi kami nag-share. Tsaka, sobrang, si Dan kasi super quiet lang yun sa room namin. Kasi sumisigaw na kami, hindi niya pa kami naririnig. <laughs> Kaaway na kami, wala rin siya. Parang, hindi niya rin, alam na na, kung ano nangyayari. So, ganun si Dan. Tsaka, very focused. And sobrang nakaka-inspire si Dan in such a way na, Bayo ang kanyang course. Tapos kami ni na Ella, psych. So parang lagi siya nag-aaral. So mapapaaral ka kasi sobrang tahimik sa dorm. Ganyan. So ganyan yung mga, mga ano namin sa dorm. Uh, nagtutulungan din talaga kami if we need something. And pag meron kaming extra money, sabay-sabay din kaming manonood ng movie to relax. Ganyan. May extra money. Minsan niya wala. Extra money. <laughs> <laughs> Laptop na lang. <laughs> Lap- na- Oo. Oh, like your- pag natabihin namin yung bed yung mga bed namin, tapos manonood lang kami ng movie, ganun. So, I think, since pare-pares kami galing sa ibang schools, alam mo, yan, yun talaga yung nakapag-bond sa amin, nakapag-reconnect, I mean, nag-connect sa amin to help each other survive the Ateneo. <laughs> so, yun pala yung early days ng Team Besh, huh? That, those are the oh, early yes. days of uh, the popular ah. Team Besh. Okay. <laughs> Eliza, the following year, you finally get to play for Ateneo in the UAAP. Yes. And then, stepladder semifinals, UST. Kalaban mo. What was that like? I mean, di ba? High stakes game. Whoever wins that series will go to the finals against LaSalle. Like, how was that feeling wow. like, you know? Ah... Uh. Alam mo, one thing I always remember whenever I play against UST, I have to show them na nag-improve ako, na ma- maayos ako maglaro because I think, hopefully, I make them proud also kasi I came from that system. So, yun din yung one thing na make sure ko. I, na pressure ko yung sarili ko na parang ah, I have to, to be, parang I have to bring my A game. I mean, I, I, I mean, every game naman gusto ko. Pero iba yung Iba yung dating sa akin pag USC yung kalaban. Gusto ko rin napapakita sa kanila na parang ah, si Alay sa galang yung USC na natuto yan. Uh, ito, yung, ito yung mga natutunan niya. So gusto ko rin ipakita yun sa kanila pag nakakalaban. And ayun, uh, fortunately naman na na-overcome din namin yung first year namin uh, na mapunta, nakapunta kami sa finals. But for the first it, time ever. For the first, oh, wow. For the first time ever. Then, Alaysa, what was the feeling? What was the feeling like first time ever you're in the finals and you're playing against La Salle and you guys won game number one. What was the... Do you, do you guys remember that day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I? But <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. that was the, ano, the following year. Sige, later na. Nanalo pa namin game one. Oo nga eh. Hindi ko na matandaan. So, sa, sa arena? Yes. Ay, San Juan, yeah. San Juan. Ah, ah, okay. Babalikin Buti ba yun? Buti pa si Anton, naalala niya tayo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Siguro yung naalala ko lang, kinakabahan ako nun. Ako rin, siguro. Ito, honestly, honestly speaking, nung mga first year ko talaga, parang, ah, ano ba yung rivalry? Ano ba yung Atenea Lasal? Parang one thing na hindi ko talaga, hindi ko siya ma-imbibe pa kasi parang that was my first year. Parang, Kaya parang ngayon akin parang ah, pag yes yung kalaban ko medyo mas ano ako kasi I want to show nga na I mean I, I learned something pero nung nagati na rasal kami that year hindi pa masya hindi ko di, ako ha hindi pa nagsisink in then sa akin na may ganong rivalry but honestly I think one thing na naalala ko sobrang daming tao yun lang naalala ko sobrang daming nanood nung, nung day na yon at uh, di ba yun yung pati sa Sa taas? Sa taas, puno. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah tapos parang first time ko na-experience yung ganong kadaming tao na nanonood sa amin. So, yun lang yung naaalala ko nung first game. 
and sobra atang saya natin ng first game na yun. Parang yun lang at yung naaalala ko. And, and that was only the beginning because mm. the popularity and the gate attendance and the venue would more than double in the years to come. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yun nga, sabi mo nga, Anton, season 75, venues became bigger. Araneta, Moa, hello, those are big venues. And the finals took place there. Pero paano ka ba nakapag-adjust dun sa sudden rise of popularity ng sport? Napansin mo ba yun? Nakakagulat, di ba? Hindi ba? Parang nagulat ako. Nakagulat siya kasi... Parang isipin mo yung isipin mo yung sa San Juan, like ang liit lang ng venue, tapos punuan na. Tapos pa inisip ko, oh. parang napupuno ba yung Araneta at saka yung Moa? Oh, parang ikaw pa yung nag-doubt, okay lang naman po kami sa San Juan Arena. Kaya <laughs> <laughs> kita pa natin yung bola doon kasi sobrang laki, malulula tayo. Yung mga concern namin eh. Yeah. ba diba? But, alam mo, one thing, Siguro kasi din, and Anton, we were so, kami nila din, we're so used, our batch were so used na walang masyadong nanonood. So we really appreciated everyone supporting the sport and the team. So we didn't take it as something na parang, ah, mapipressure ako kasi ang daming nanonood or madaming nagsichir or baka mapahiya ako. It's more of, oh my God, we're so thankful na ang dami ng nanonood ng volleyball na, alam mo yun, napupunta sila sa venue. So we didn't, took it as parang pressure din talaga nung time na yun. Kasi alam namin yung, alam din namin na pagdaanan din namin yung walang nanonood. So it's more of like that. So I think maganda lang din yung timing na dumating kami. Gradually din yung pag dami ng nanonood. So medyo na hahanda kami ng mga coaches namin, ng Ateneo community. So yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier Coach Roger Goreyeb, who yes. was your first coach when you went to Ateneo. And ang uh, laging tinatawag sa'yo ni Coach Roger is Baldo. Oh. Like sa pag-timeout, Baldo, Baldo, paulit-ulit. <laughs> uh, where did you get this nickname? Kay Coach Roger ba galing yun? Oo, oh, ano oh, kami. Lahat kami, meron kami mga uh, guy version or the... Diba? Uh, Laking... Parang guy, ver- yeah, guy version namin. Okay. Ako ba ito? Then is... Si, si Phil. Si Pilising. Si Pilising. Si Z. Si, si Z. Si Z. Si Mazinger Z. Oh, di ko alam kung sino yun. Di ko alam kung sino yun. mga nicknames sa laga or moniker sa kanyang... Oh, may sarili siyang moniker. Ano yung kay Den? Tinawag kanyang Alaysa. Alam mo galit na siya. Pag mga bansi. Yeah. Seryoso na. Seryoso na. <laughs> relax pa lang tayo. Pag, Alaysa! Pag umano na yun, ako. Or kaya, De- Denise! Mga ganyan. Ano yung nickname ni Den? Si Den? Oh Ay, my God! Den, ano yung wala. nakikaroon na yung nickname ka? Itetext ko sa'yo. Kaya na yung mga paano. Kaya na yung mga kakaalala nito. Coach Roger, if you're watching, baka you can comment or text us. Ano nga ba yung nickname ko? Kaya na ni. Minsan, text ako ni Coach Roger ha, sa mga history. Minsan, pag pinag-uusapan oh. namin yung, yung career niya, magte-text yun bigla. <laughs> Pero ang oh, gandang career sa volleyball, probably one of those, si Coach Roger. Yeah, like, for, okay. sure, I, for sure, for sure. Coach Roger, yeah. Oh, we miss you, Coach Roger. Mm. We hope you're well, Coach. We miss you. Lai, well, what's the most uh, important lesson you learned from Coach Roger? Coach Roger, oh my gosh. Wala tumawa. Ah... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sobrang si si Coach Roger napaka ano napaka-disiplinado niya. Like disciplinarian talaga siya. Sobrang father figure siya. You know, nung na-recruit din ako niyang Ateneo, Coach Roger went to our house pa in Batangas. As in, wow. all the way to Batangas, our Kubo house pa. Tumawad siya ng mga sapa, rivers, everything. Pero pumunta siya ng bahay namin. Very ano siya, very passionate, very dedicated talaga siya pag uh, love niya and alam mo na ramdaman talaga namin na iba yung pag-show kasi ni Coach Roger ng love niya sa amin as in very strict talaga si Coach Roger but you'll appreciate it after afterwards talaga na parang kung bakit siya ganun ka strict disciplinarian kasi alam niya may potential ka alam niya matututo ka 
and kailangan lang niyang maging bad cop noong mga panahon na yon kasi bata pa kami. So, wow, bata. Totoo, bata pa kami. Mga 17, yeah. 18, 17 pa lang kami noon. So, Ay, medyo 18 na ako nung pumasok ako ng college. Then sa mama ka. So, yan. One thing talaga na natutunan ko is to be siguro kailangan ko rin maging disiplinado <laughs> sa sar- I mean sa sarili ko so yun na na instill na, naman na sa amin ni coach Roger yun. Well, after coach Rogers, you know, last year with the Fab 5. Yeah. Season 76. Huh? Hi. Do my thing. Pina <laughs> <laughs> sa Ateneo. <laughs> well, actually, di ba he, he came dapat mag i-train lang niya tayo. Consultant lang siya. Consultant lang siya. And then eventually he became oh, the head coach. And we won our first ever championship. Yeah. Ateneo's first ever championship in the UAAP. Wow. What does that accomplishment, you know, mean to you? And, you know, for the school that welcomed you with open arms? Uh, ako, I'm, I was really just happy na finally na-overcome natin yung alam mo yun, kasi for the longest time, two years, at Ateneo Lasal, lagi kaming sa dulo, sa finals, hindi namin, parang wala kaming panapos. So I think one thing na naging masaya ako was na na-prove natin na meron pa palang um ganon. Pero <laughs> parang kaya pala talaga natin as a team. I mean, we wouldn't have done it naman if not for all the players din na nakasama natin like the Fab Five, di ba? Sila rin talaga yung nagturo sa atin. Pagka-graduate nila, alam mo namang full support din talaga sila sa atin. Uh, I think hindi lang siya memorable sa akin but sa aming lahat as a team, as a community. So, one thing na siguro uh, balik natin yung honor kasi for the longest time din naman nagcha-champion was like basketball, other mm. sports, wala talaga mm. sa volleyball. I mean, and the school is really investing sa volleyball. So, I think it was the right time then na mabalik. Lalong-lalo na na, alam mo yan, hindi rin in-expect ng team, hindi in-expect ng community, ng kahit na sino na magcha-champion tayo. So, it's a nice way naman to uh, give back also to, to, the, to our school in that way. Wow. Yeah. And Eliza, after making history, after you and Den made history, you made more history the following year in UAP season 77. Na-sweep niyo yung buong season. And to me, I always say this, what makes this so impressive is that you only dropped seven sets. As in, pitong sets lang kayo natalo buong season in those 16 matches. But when we talk to other players like yan, si Namadi, si Gia... It's not all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, there were things that happened in the background. Yung mga paghihirap din. The, yung hindi nakikita ng tao. Like si Gia, sinasabi niya na ilang beses siyang pinaiyak ni Coach Tai. Ikaw ba, Lai? Pinaiyak, pinaiyak ka rin ba ni Coach Tai? <laughs> Sabihin nilang lahat, favorite ako ni Coach Tai. <laughs> <laughs> What was the worst that Coach Tai did to you? na talagang you were pushed to your limit, Eliza. Parang wala. Wala? Worst? He always says, ano, leadership, leadership. Ah, leadership. Probably that one. First that one. year niya, oh my God. Eliza, leadership, leadership. Sabi ko, ano pati leadership yung gusto niya? Eh, hindi niya rin ma-explain kung anong gusto yeah. niya. Gusto niya pala, kailangan makapoint ako. Kasi kailangan. Uh, kasi pag nakakapoint ako at happy ako, leadership yun for him. So, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, Ah, ano, actually, doon lang ata ako parang, ano, ano ba itong leadership na sinasabi niya? Tapos naiinis ata ako kay coach tayo ng mga yun. Kasi parang, I was trying to talk to them. Mm. Parang, hinahodol ko sila. Tapos sisigaw pa rin siya, Alaysa, leadership. Tapos parang ako, ano, ano bang leadership? <laughs> <laughs> What do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, di ba? That's the question talaga. Kaya <laughs> pala talaga. Parang di niya rin ako pinahirapan sa training. <laughs> Hindi ko alam. Or, like, then, I don't know. Hindi ko alam. Hindi ko alam sa tree. Oo. Aside from running, oh, parang sasabihin talaga sa'yo ng mga teammates ko, favorite ako ni Coach Sai. I'm claiming it. I'm claiming it. <laughs> <laughs> Pero I don't know. Hindi ko maalala yung mahirap na pinagawa sa akin ni Coach Sai. Aside from, as a team, pinag, 
pinapatakbo niya tayo, pinapersprint niya tayo. para mga ganun, yun lang yun naaalala ko. But personally, wala akong maisip talaga. Okay, lai, like, eto. Kasi after season 75, nag- nawala na yung Fab Five. Ikaw yung naging team captain ng team. And we were, we didn't have a coach for yeah. some time. So, how did you handle the team nung time na yun? Like, we were looking up to you to, you know, well, the, get the team together. <laughs> Share mo naman sa, sa, sa viewers natin. Because like, Well, I know how you did it. I just want you to share no. it. No! <laughs> I didn't do anything, honestly. Honestly, I didn't do anything. I think I was lucky enough. I have like four batchmates na very, alam mo yun, yung taas din ng dirt na IPU and alam mo yun, tinulungan din talaga ako na kung paano i-lead yung team. Kasi we were actually just, ano ba? waiting sa office na magbigay ng instructions kung ano gagawin namin. And si Coach Parley was our coach back then pa. So, nakikinig lang din kami kay Coach Parley. And as a team captain, siguro yung ginagawa ko lang, I would actually, si, di ako nag, masyadong nagre-reklamo. Hindi ko alam kung tama ba. Lagi ko lang susundin yung mga gagpapagawa sa akin ng mga coaches. Tapos wala sila magagawa, yung mga teammates ko. Kasi ako yung team captain. Sinusunod ko sila lang coach. Tapos sila, ah, si Eliza <laughs> Sinusunod na lang din nila. So, I guess that was the way lang nung mga time na yun. Parang, di ba? Hindi, actually, yun lang ata. Was that, was, was that it yeah. then? That was it? Yeah. Actually, nung mga time na yun, parang may hiya kasi Eliza's doing it. So, you have to do it. I think that's like the mark of like a team captain when you get yung respect ng teammates. Well, even like your batchmates, like you have, you gain their respect because like you do things Oh, supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> so like, come When Alice is doing it, you have to do it also. So I think that in that way, like she's she's a good team captain. Kaya, pag, like outside of the court. Si coach tay, de ba? Pag may kasi may mga punishment si coach pag di namin nagagawa yung isang drill. Lagi sila lie. Wag mo nang gawin lie. Para hindi tayo mapwede. <laughs> lie, please. So, may mga kaya nakaming focus. Yung mga, alam mo, yung nakakapagpabond talaga sa inyo sa team. Pero, fun, funny, funny. I mean, so, When you look back at it now, it's all funny. Yeah, yeah. pero nung andan kami, parang, oh. <laughs> Ayaw yeah, mo I, na every day. <laughs> listening to your stories, I can see that your oneness as a group. Kasi nga, marami kayo in that batch na batchmates talaga. You guys are really close. And, you know, going through the hardships together, I think that's what drew you guys together to work hard towards that singular goal, which was winning a championship. And I remember, Eliza, no first two years mo, personally, ang nakita kong kulang sa'yo was your conditioning. Kasi like, may mga times na pag five set, sobrang bagsak na yung mga balikat mo. Pero pilit ka pa rin naglalaro. As in, kahit pagod na pagod ka na, pilit ka pa rin naglalaro. Like trying to, really trying to carry the team. So when Coach Tai comes in and really ramps up your conditioning drills, takbo-takbo, ganyan-ganyan, habang umiiyak yung mga players, ano, malapit na masok ka. I mean, the, when the game came, it was so easy. Kasi condition na kayo eh. So so that that's one of the things that um, I uh, I now know and may hopefully the viewers see that too the why why you guys were so successful in season 76 and season 77 season 78 though isa sa mga batchmates mo Alisa graduate na si Denden wala na <laughs> Me and Ella and, 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 and Ella and, and, and Ella also so I mean that must have been a little bit tough because I mean you guys were bonded for so long and then kulang na kayo. How was that like in season 78? Super different season 78. Even, syempre nag-iba na rin ako ng roommate since yung graduate si Den and si Ella na I'm so used to parang sobrang comfortable talaga ako na sila yung naging oh naiiyak ako. So sad ako pag naaalala ko. Pero honestly uh I was I was really happy for them kasi grabe it was really a great exit for the two of them and they really deserved it. I mean kung may bibigyan tayo mga unsung heroes talaga si Den and Ella yan. Grabe yung ginagawa nila sa training na hindi nakikita ng mga tao. And alam mo yan parang sometimes yung mga yung credits din, 'di ba? Hindi natin naibibigay sa mga 
nagpapakahirap sa likod ng ng training and alam mo yun kung paano kami nakakapalo and si Den and si Ella yun two great defenders sa sa likod talaga and Ella great I mean she's a great volleyball player di ba so na nakakamiss kasi alam mo nagkakatinginan lang kami ng mga yun, alam na namin tapos tatawa lang kami as in ganun kami maglaro sa court parang Wow, gabi naman. Galing mo naman doon. Paano mo nagawa? Ganyan pa kami. As in, nagbubuno nga kami. Sige, patawa na kami. Kahit tambak na kami. So, nakakamiss talaga. And that was one thing na parang, if may mababalik lang ako, sana sa mabay na akong gamaradit. Hindi. <laughs> Pero if, if may... Hindi lang din kasi sila din yung nawala that year. Michelle was not able to play also. So, madami kaming struggle that year. Madi, uh, parang parang na ACL ata si Maddie that year. Hmm. So, madami pinagdaanan. And it wasn't the, the best uh, exit na mapipray ko, but sabi, sabi ko nga kanina, may mga plans talaga si Lord kung, I mean, meron siyang plans para ma-humble ka or ma-humble ka or parang Ma- ma-feel mo na parang, ah, hindi pa enough yung ginagawa mo. So, I, I look at it that way na lang instead of parang uh, <laughs> drag ko yung self ko na parang grabe. Walang, walang pinata yung last year. So, I'm just really parang looking at the brighter side ng mga panahon na yun. But And you know I- what? You, 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 gave, you gave the fans a great lasting memory of you in your UAP career. Your last two matches in the finals, you scored more than 30 I think it was 34 in game 2 and 31 in game number 3. Ito, Alaysa, hindi ko makakalimutan to. Ah. Nung, nung game number 3, Araneta yun eh. Diba? Araneta Coliseum, your last game in the UAP. I went up to the top, as in yung pinakataas, because I wanted to take a picture. Because I found out that there were 22,848 fans who were in attendance. Yun yung pinakamalaking attendance, gate attendance ever in UAP Women's Volleyball history, regardless of venue, ha? regardless of venue, that was the highest, 22,848. And then, I will never forget na I was watching from yung pinakataas and you said goodbye. As in, before you left the court, you walked around the Araneta Coliseum saying goodbye to everybody. Oh, man. Uh, and like for the last time, I mean, I can only imagine, siguro yung mga fans mo, They're seeing you for the last time. As in like, you know, you're, you're going to them one yeah. last time. You know, Jule, do, do you remember that moment? Yeah. Alisa, what were you feeling? <laughs> I wish I disappeared. Oh my God. ako, nahiya ako kasi hindi ko talaga na-realize na umiikot na ako na ginagawa ko yun na nagsisay thank you ako to everyone na parang kahit sa LaSalle side umikot ako. Mm, yeah, as in the whole Araneta. <laughs> I know, it's so hard. Yeah. Grabe, hindi ko talaga alam ko bakit ko po ginawa yun. But I was just really thankful for all the fans. And really parang that, siguro that moment, ano pa iniisip ko? Parang gusto ko lang din sila i-thank you. Siguro yun lang yung nasa isip ko. Mm. Kasi It was a great match. I I would say it was really a it great was. match. It was a great season for for me, but isa lang talaga yung nananalo, di ba? And it it was Lasal, and they actually deserve it kasi pinaghirapan din nila. And I think I took that moment lang para to thank everyone for appreciating really the sport and uh, the game kasi alam mo yon, they would cheer, they would boo. I mean, pero at the end of the day, they're all there to, to appreciate volleyball and all the players. And I remember on social media, I posted that picture that I took. And my oh. caption was, Philippine volleyball will never be the same. And true enough, that was the highest ever. It was never the same after that. Never na bumalik sa ganung kataas na, na fans. I mean, UST and Ateneo almost reached that level during their last game at, at MOA. So I'm sure you're happy about that, Eliza, kasi UST and Ateneo, both your I schools. <laughs> <laughs> Yun naman yung highest gate attendance sa MOA. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I for sure, I'm, I'm sure na-appreciate ng fan, ng volleyball fans mm. yung ginawa mo. Because it was, for me, it was heartfelt what you did, like saying mm. thank you to everyone. And I'm sure it was a lasting memory for them also. I mean, kung ginawa yun ang idol ko, like, I'd be like, What? That's gonna be the last time I'm gonna see my idol in like 
in a, in an Ateneo jersey, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, moving on na, graduate ka na ng Ateneo. Oh. And your first pro stint was in Thailand. And mm-hmm. we usually go there to prepare for the UAAP, di ba? Titraining lang tayo doon, but then, first time mo to actually play there competitively and as an import. So, what? how was the experience like for you? I felt like I was, ano, a rookie talaga. Like, literally. <laughs> it was a new environment, new coach, new team, and their culture so much. I mean, like, I was lucky. We're lucky enough na same yung system ng, ng coach po, coach, coach tayo, tsaka ni coach, ni coach M. But, <laughs> I'm still culture shocked kasi syempre, hindi siya yung out of my comfort zone talaga. And I'm away from home. <laughs> Siguro one thing na nag-struggle din ako. Pero, uh, that's the first time also na hindi ako na for first six ulit. Parang oh. sobrang, I was really driven to train nung nasa Thailand ako. Twice a day training, twice a day, I don't even care. Basta nakaka-train ako and it doesn't matter kung papaglaruin ako. But I think one thing na gusto ko talaga when I went to Thailand was to get that experience na mag-training talaga. Kasi after that season 78 na game that season, I felt like I really need, parang I needed something na makakapag-improve pa ako sa, sa volleyball. And I chose that path to train in Thailand. I'm not really aiming na really makalaro ako. It's more of really exposed sa training dun. So, and it was really for me a good decision then to get away from here sa Manila kasi yun nga, gusto ko ibang environment. Yung tipong yung tingin talaga sa akin, hindi <laughs> ako si Eliza Valdez or someone na marunong mag-volleyball. So, yun man talaga pinamdi sa akin, Coach M. <laughs> As in, sabi, may one time, di ko makakalimutan to, nadulas talaga ako kasi nag one man. Eh, sobrang lahat na nag-roll as in basa na yung floor. Nadulas ako. Pero wala talaga silang pakailam. They will throw the ball far away from you. You have to run after you. I mean, like, something na okay din talaga na may experience. So, yun. Really learn a lot from from that from that Thailand stint. And, and not just about volleyball. I think you really tried to get to know everybody as in all your teammates. Kasi naalala mo, Eliza, nung naglaro kayo sa AVC somewhere south sa Laguna um, I was asking you the Thailand team was here tapos tinatanong kita Liza sino ba magaling diyan sino ba magaling diyan sa Thailand team tapos sinabi mo you should look at ano Pimpichaya Kop yeah. Kopram si si Beam you can yeah. her Beam right so like you, and then si Kutika Kaupin na teammate mo rin sa 3BB na Cornot naging teammate mo ulit sa Cream 9 Cool Smashers like Aside from the training, aside from the discipline that you saw from them, ano pa yung mga bagay na binaon mo from that experience that you used when you went back to the Philippines? Oh. Well, one thing kasi na siguro okay din talaga, I'm, my coach is coach tayo until now. So lahat ng mga training na parang drills na pinagawa sa akin doon, pag pinapagawa ni coach tayo, sobrang hindi na ako nagugulat kasi I've done it before. But aside from training and discipline, I think I brought that Thailand culture in terms of volleyball. Ah, kasi it's so much different. Their, their culture talaga as a community, sobrang eba. As in, they're very dedicated uh, in such a way na pag national team as in may 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 time may parang dapat ito allotted lang sa club team ito allotted time sa national team so parang i wanted to put that and bring it here so pag pinapatag tayo ng national team or may club team as much as possible uh, parang parang sinusundan ko yung system nila para alam ko rin kung kung paano aalagaan yung self ko yung maintain yung yung katawan ko sa parang well condition para nako kahit maglaro ako national team or mag-club team ako. So, yun yung one thing na, na gusto din, dinala ko rin dito. Kasi sila beam, sila kutika, they, they're training din sa national team back then. Eh. So, nakita ko yung pagod nila. Pero they really, parang, I don't know nga kung paano din nila ginawa yun. Pero, 
sobrang healthy nila as an athlete. So, yun yung one thing din na, na parang feeling ko din na adapt ko hopefully pala. You what's so admirable about Alisa? Lai, I love you. Uh, <laughs> yung yung fact na you're Alisa Valdez here in the Philippines. Like everybody knows you, everybody admires you for like, you know, being a winner. Being a winner, you're an MVP, you're a champion. But you decided to step out of your comfort zone and, you know, start from scratch in in a foreign land, in a foreign place and, you know, just be a sponge like what, like what you said and just learn new things and that's that's something that you know i really admire about you na kahit na gano karami ng mvp sa palanunan mo you're always open to new things and i hope that yung uh, nanonood sa atin ngayon especially the kids i hope you you have that same mentality and same mindset na kahit ano pang ma-achieve nyo, you're always open to new things and there's always something new to learn. Definitely. On point, oh. on point. <laughs> well, Lai, after your Thailand stint naman, yung next assignment mo as an import was in Taiwan. And, ano naman yung difference ng <laughs> style of play in Taiwan sa style of play natin dito sa Philippines? Ito, one thing, I really had a hard time adjusting sa Taiwan kasi... I've never been to Taiwan. I've never been to Taiwan ata. And it's so hard to understand them because we were we're so used to going back and forth to Thailand. So medyo familiar tayo sa culture, sa pagsasalita nila. But when it was it was in Taiwan, I had a hard time because I was really trying to learn Chinese. I was. Wow. But it was super hard for me na parang may konti lang ako masabi na iba yung pronunciation ko, iba na yung meaning. So, dun ako medyo nahirapan to communicate. But marunong din naman mag-English yung coach ko. And then, I think we have the same language naman, volleyball nga. Pero nga, may different style din sila ng playing. Iba yung setting nila, iba yung, alam mo yun, iba yung dynamics nila pagdating sa volleyball. So, I guess the one thing naman na natutunan ko sa Taiwan ano, sobrang different talaga yung iba, iba yung way na pag-take care nila sa katawan nila. Pag may mga injuries sila, they, they, they do acupuncture and other therapies. So I was really, it, it was really different for me as compared from Thailand and, and Philippines. And then mga drills nila, different than yung mga one man sila. Iba, sobrang Iba yung mga drills. Meron pa kaming drill na one time, sinisipa namin yung bola, hindi ako makagulog. <laughs> Kaya yun yung naaalala ko. Kasi meron kaming time, may isa, tatakbo kami pa, sobrang layo, tapos sisipain namin pa balik yung bola sa court. Hindi ko magawa kasi yung bola nga, hindi ko matamaan sa kamay ko, paapa kaya. So, <laughs> <laughs> so may nangyayon na ito sa mga ibang sa drills na ibang drills. Pero, nag-enjoy din talaga ako kasi we would travel naman super far to have games then. So I get to visit all the cities in, in Taiwan and really see all the players. Kasi we always, we normally played against them naman pag mga U23. Hmm. And that's why pala iba yung dynamics nila kasi ganun sila mag-training. Then. So yeah. Lai, uh, magkasama kayo ni T4, right? Sa attack yeah. line. Alisa, I just want to clarify. Is it T4 or 4T? What, what T- do you call her? T4. T4. T4, right? Okay. T4, di ba? Kasi, okay. Wala eh. Yung, yung, mga, fan, yung mga fans, sabi, 4T eh. Because, oh, well, oh. apat naman talaga na T's. Yeah. yeah. 4 T's. But may catch kasi like, it's more catchy when you say T4. Yeah, and I've heard it from you players. Like, I heard it first from Abi Maranyo. Sabi niya, andun si T4. So, when I was commentating, I was saying T4 and then the fans were correcting me saying it's 4T. So, I mean... I, I guess I guess this clears everything up. Oh, yeah, ah, galing na sa mga players, ah, galing na sa teammate ni T4, ah, T4 talaga. I think it's a privilege, Alisa, na alam mo yon, matuto ka as teammate and opponent from the likes of yun nga si Beam, si T4. You've had a lot of great teammates. I mean, since the start, yeah. like Kim Fardo, you know, Dindin Santiago, then then Lazaro, the list goes on and on. But Alisa, um Meron ka bang idol? Like, volleyball idol? Uh, life idol? 
Kasi maraming umiidol na sa'yo, marami ka ring mga idol na naging kalaban at kakampi. Sino ba ang idol ng isang Eliza Valdez? Oh my God. Uh, it, it's weird that I really don't have. I mean, like, Leila Barros would be like, andyan, na no, pinapanood mo. But I can't say na parang in-idolize ko rin sila. Kasi parang ang bata-bata ko pa rin ata noon. Wala pa akong, ah, mag-volleyball ako. Parang something like that. Pero, uh-huh. ngayon, mas na-appreciate ko na na yung mga naglalaro like sila Sluting, sila KYK, mas na-appreciate hmm. ko na kasi alam ko na yung dynamic ng volleyball. Na alam ko na yung parang, ah, ito yung ginawa niya. Gusto kong gayahin yung ganito niyang technique. Parang more of like that naman ako as a, as a volleyball fan sa mga kila zooting. Wow, well, taas na pangarap ko pero yung height ko ang gandito lang ni zooting. Oh. <laughs> right now, Eliza, right now, if you were gonna pick one, gonna pick who's one? your favorite? Who's your favorite? Idol. Oh, <laughs> siguro, zooting. Zooting. Okay, okay. Yeah. So good. So good. So good. So good. And, and she's, she's so young. And super humble niya kasi nakasaba namin siya sa Asian Games. Tapos naglalakad lang siya na parang Girl, ikaw kaya si Zooting? Gusto ko siyang ganun eh. Girl, si Zooting ka? Ano ka ba? Like, si yeah, Zooting? Si <laughs> Zooting. Si Zooting. Girl. Tapos ganito lang siya maglakad. Ganyan lang siya. As in, sobrang, alam mo yun, ma-amaze ganyan talaga. Tapos pinakita mo sila mag-training, all out din talaga siya. Parang, nakaka- nakaka-amaze lang na makakita ng isang Olympian. Tapos, very humble. Do everything in training. Very parang, Grabe siya sa teammates niya din. So, sobrang bait-bait. Well, Lai, you are undoubtedly one of Philippine volleyball's treasures. Wow. Well, for me, you're a living legend already. Same. Y- yun yung status mo, Lai. Well, can you share with us an yung recipe to your success? Recipe? Huh. Like one <laughs> cup ba ng ganito? Two cups ba ng ganito? Uh, I would say... What worked for me, well, I don't know if, syempre, iba-iba tayong klaseng tao, but what worked really for me, I actually, very simple, I listened to my coaches, uh, kasi alam kong player ako, pabalik na sila, pabunta pa lang ako, so I listened to them, uh, I surrounded myself by, I surrounded myself by people na very supportive of me, alam, sasabihin ko ano yung mali ko, sabihin nila kung ano yung na-improve ko. Uh, and ako, I really trust God. I, I don't know, I mean, I feel like God always has, I mean, plans for everyone. Like, may plan talaga pa siya para sa atin. So, I think those three was my recipe. I listened to sa mga nakakatanda, sa alam na may mga insight, lagi ko sinasurround yung self ko ng mga taong alam kong makakatulong talaga din sa akin or supportive of me, my family, my friends. And yun, lagi lang ako nagdadasal din talaga. Kung ano yung para sa atin, dadating yun. Siyempre, if you work hard for it. So, dapat may hard work and dapat determinado ka rin talagang matuto kasi at the end of the day, if you have the talent and you're not hard- hardworking and determined to actually learn and be more Siyempre, you'll be stagnant naman. Eliza, we're so amazed that all the stories that you shared, lahat ng mga pinagdaanan mo, the ups and downs of your life from your humble beginnings in San Juan, Batangas, up to today. But for our final question, Eliza, if you had an opportunity, a chance to go back in time to talk to the younger version of you, a young Eliza Valdez, and this Eliza Valdez is, you know, sad because na hold up siya, tapos kinuha yung cellphone, na dulas dahil basa yung floor, sa kaka one man at lahat, kakagulong ng mga players. What will you say to this young Eliza Valdez to give her hope for the future? Ano masasabi ko sa kanya? Oh my gosh. Uh... I think I would say you're you're doing well and uh lahat ng mga hirap na pinagdadaanan mo ngayon lang lahat ng mga sakripisyo or mga sacrifices na 
uh, na dinadala mo or sinakripisyo mo ngayon, for sure, worth it yan pagdating sa dulo kasi lahat may kapalit. May reward sa dulo. And yun lang. Siguro yun lang. And one thing siguro na masasabi ko sa kanya, ang galing mo naman, nagagawa mo yun. Lakas <laughs> 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 naman ng love, girl. Ikaw talaga. <laughs> Parang ganyan. <laughs> Kaya ako, I admire kung gano'ng kalakas siguro yung loob mo. And now I realize na parang it's not easy or hindi siya yung normal na path na na ititake ng mga normal siguro ng mga tao. But I'm really amazed on how parang courageous and brave you are. So, sana wag ka magbabago. One big fight. Oh, one big fight. <laughs> Never so, change, Eliza. Never change. Yes, Never yes. change. Thank you for sharing your story, Lai. I know you've been through a lot of interviews. Yeah. But thank you for sharing your story here with us. And I'm sure na must na appreciate ka ng fans mo. And definitely kami ni Anton must na appreciate namin yung story mo. Ang dami mong mga kwento na hindi ko pa narinig before. Hindi ko alam na hold up ka pala. Binigay mo yung phone mo. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you guys for inviting me here. I've been watching your mga episodes. Thank you. Thank you, Lai. Thank you. Also, get to know all the players then. So, congratulations and sana madami pa kayong ma-inspire ng mga uh, aspiring athletes hindi lang mga volleyball players. Diba? Same Thanks, to you, Eliza. Same to you. I mean, you know, you still got a long way to go. You still got a long way to go. And your impact goes beyond the game of volleyball as yeah. we all know. Thank so, you, thank you. guys. Thanks, Besh. Keep inspiring. Keep inspiring. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, Lai, thank you so much for taking the time out of your, I know, very busy schedule to be with us and sharing your story. Till next time, guys! Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.